Morning, Detective. Good morning. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk to you a little bit about um, some communication uh, that you might have had with Mr. Halderson at, the, at this point. I know you've testified before. Um, just going to July 8th, um, so kind of the second full day of the investigation, had the parents reported the day before missing. Um, on the 8th, did you receive any calls from Chandler Halderson? Yes, I received three telephone calls from Chandler. And uh, did you talk to him all three times? Yes. Okay. Uh, approximately when was the first call that day? Uh, the first call was at approximately 11.30 a.m. Okay. And uh, what, to your recollection, did you talk about with Mr. Halderson? Uh, Mr. Halderson uh, wanted to inform me that the, he had spoken to the news, uh, the media, uh, gave some interviews on that. Um, I asked him if he had any further information for us uh, that he may have provided to the media that we didn't have at that point, and he said he did not. Okay. Um, approximately when was that call again? Uh, that one, I believe, was approximately 11.30 a.m. Was that recorded or not? That was not. Okay. Uh, the next call with Mr. Halderson, when was that? Uh, that one, I believe, was at approximately 1.30 p.m. Okay. And uh, what did you talk about at that time with Mr. Halderson? Chandler told me that he had been searching around in his parents' bedroom, uh, located a set of keys in his father's nightstand, the end table, uh, that he believed were to the cabin. Uh, he told me that his brother Mitchell was on his way over to the Oak Springs home to grab those keys because Mitchell was going to drive up with his fiancée to the cabin to check it out. Okay. And uh, around this time you got this call, were you aware that Dane County had asked Langlade County to assist in this investigation? I was. Uh, and what was the plan at that point? Were deputies from here going up there? Yes. Um, I told Mr. Helderson that we'd like to be in contact with Mitchell as we were going to be sending uh, two members of the sheriff's office up to assist with the search. Um, I didn't want anybody going in or around the, the home without law enforcement present. Sure. And was that call recorded? It was not. Okay. Um, did something happen between the second call and, you said there were three calls, and the third call that day that was important in the investigation? Yes. Uh, we received information that Chandler Helderson was observed out at the farm um, in, the, in Cottage Grove, um, near a wooded area. Uh, I also had just received, prior to the third call, information that uh, Torso was located in the area that Chandler Halderson was last seen. Uh, in, in your mind and in the course of the investigation, is that the point where this became a homicide investigation for you versus a missing persons investigation? Yes. Okay. Um, so the third call, uh, when was that? That one was uh, approximately 3.30 p.m. And uh, was that call recorded? That one was recorded. And why was that one recorded and the prior two not? Um, at that point, uh, Chandler had called me. Um, we found a torso in the location where he was observed. Uh, it appeared to be a, a male torso at that time. Um, Chandler moved from a person of interest to a, a suspect at that point. Sure. Um, the deputies that you had sent up to Langlade County at some point, um, was any action taken regarding those folks headed up to Langlade County? Yes. Um, those members of the sheriff's office were part of our crime scene unit. Uh, we immediately called them and arranged for them to turn around and come back as we now had an active crime scene. Okay. So when we watched the Langlade County video and they talked about Dane County turning around, that was the impetus was you and, and that stage of the investigation uh, where everything changed? That was why, yeah. Okay. Um, the call that you recorded uh, with Mr. Halderson, um, approximately what time was that again? That was approximately 3.30 p.m., I believe 3.38. I'm showing it's been marked as exhibit number 114. Um, yeah, it's a USB drive, correct? Correct. And uh, this is the recorded call. You've had an opportunity to listen to this or with Mr. Halderson. Yes. Okay. Move 114, 115 in evidence for the court record. No objection. They are received. Move to publish 114. You may. Um, a little confused. Uh, I got two squads parked right outside my house, and they're not really canvassing. They're just kind of sitting there. Is everything all right? Yeah, I mean, they're in the area doing canvassing, and they're also uh, probably doing a shift change right now, getting our second shift crew on around 3, 3.30. Oh, there's four now. that we 
we need to know? Well, they're probably doing reports. They're probably doing shift change. You know, they've, they've been going around trying to get all the neighbors, so I'm wondering if they're in the area trying to catch people now that they're coming home from work. I'm not sure. I haven't talked to any of them in just a little while. Uh, my brother, I haven't heard from him. No, as far as I know, they're still on their way up north. A couple hour drive, so he's probably halfway into it, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose about. Yeah. Any news on your end at all? Have you gotten any phone calls, text I messages? I haven't gotten any messages other than from concerned parents. Okay. Um, I can't, there's no mail. Uh, I got a, a, there's a hold on my mail. Okay. Uh, is that is that normal? I, are you guys getting it at least? No, we we don't put a hold on people's mail. I've never heard of that happening before. There's a hold on my mail. There's a ticket in there. All mail held at the station is what it says. Okay. Yeah, nothing done by us. That's for sure. Because I'm gonna need my medical bills. Yeah. No, we wouldn't put a hold on people's mail, and typically only the people that live at the address can do that. Did your parents put a hold on the mail? Does it say who put the hold on the mail? I can go check, I suppose. Okay. Um, do you know of anything? So, I don't know. It's kind of stressful. Sorry, I, so there's nothing new going on? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah. Who, who's right. there? Are you at home still right now, obviously? Because you're saying they're outside. Who's there with you? Yeah, no, not they're not with me. They're just four squads just parked outside. Okay. Who was just talking in the background, Cat? Yeah, Cat's over with me. Oh, okay. Okay. No, I mean, I can definitely give you a call or message you, I guess, depending. What time are you planning on going to dinner? Uh, I'm not sure, but... Okay. Pretty soon here. Is it cool to call you? Here for, what was that? Is it cool to call you whether yeah. you're dinner? Okay. Anytime. Okay. Well, I'll keep you posted if I hear anything. I mean, obviously with the mail, that has nothing to do with us at all. I've never heard of a detective or law enforcement agency holding somebody's mail. Um, you know, and then as far as everybody in the area, you know, you kind of had to figure we were going to be in the area all day today. Yeah, I was just wondering why there were four cars instead of... Uh, canvassing. Yeah. Um, oh, any news about that, that blue house with the big cameras? The blue house with the big cameras. Is that the one across the street? Yeah, yeah across the street, kind of in the corner. It's a newer house. Um, I haven't I, talked I, to... I stopped by the house. Yeah, I have a detective that's getting footage from the area. I don't know exactly which houses he's gotten video from oh. yet. But yeah, it sounds like they downloaded all of it and already have it at IT. Oh, okay. So he's probably reviewing it now. Okay. Yeah, it takes time to go through those things. You figure you can only fast forward so much. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I'll give you a holler if anything pops up. Um, you know, and I'll give a call around and just kind of get a briefing from people up in the area. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that. Okay. Thanks, Chandler. Thank you. Bye. A couple of questions. Uh, let's solve one thing right away. This issue with the mail, what was that about? Uh, Chandler told me that he received a ticket in the mailbox that um, the mail was being held. Sure. And did you later learn that that actually was true? I did, yeah. Law enforcement does not have the ability to hold somebody's mail, um, so I didn't know exactly what was going on there. Uh, throughout the investigation, we did learn that the Windsor Post Office um, had heard of the you know, the missing people, Barton, Krista, Helderson, and put a hold on the mail for them at that point. That had nothing to do with you guys? It had nothing to do with us. Okay. Um, there were parts of that conversation where Mr. Halderson asked about um, increased police presence or whether something new had happened in the case. At that point, something new had happened in the case, right? Correct. Um, why, w why did you not tell him that, and why did you answer the questions in the way you did? 
So at that point, uh, keep in mind, we had just received the information that a torso was located in the area that Chandler was at at the farm. Um, so in the command post, we're trying to arrange a lot of different things. A lot's going on. We're trying to, you know, control that crime scene out there. We're trying to get our crime scene investigators back to the area. Um, I'm trying to get detectives out in the area of the Oak Springs home. Um, I was trying to ask Chandler who was at the house because I'm trying to determine, you know, first if he's home, where he's at. Um, like I said, he was a suspect at this point, so I just wanted to find out where he was, who he is with. Um, I didn't want to tip him off, you know, that I had other areas or uh, other officers converging into the area. Um, okay. What was the plan at that point? Following that call with Chandler uh, at, you said about 3.30? Correct. And approximately how long before that had you received the torso news? It was approximately a half hour prior. So you're 30 minutes in, into knowing it's a homicide investigation. What plan do you come up with in the command post at that point? So we had already, uh, like I said, called our crime scene unit back to respond to the farm. Um, we had several deputies and detectives in the area of the Oak Springs address doing canvassing. We're contacting neighbors. We're talking to friends. Um, you know, a lot was going on in that neighborhood. So there was a, an increased police presence, obviously, uh, throughout the investigation. Um, at that point, a uh, few phone calls were made just to have uh, detectives and deputies more so in the area. Um, and then, uh, you know, basically, I was trying to arrange for uh, Chandler to come downtown to the public safety building where I was located uh, so we could perform a an interview. Sure. And uh, was there anyone else you really wanted to interview that day? Uh, we wanted to interview Kat also. Okay. Kat Mellinger. How was that accomplished? Uh, what happened? So we had some detectives um, and also a, a deputy assist uh, make contact with Chandler and, and Kat. Uh, they consensually, basically they were told that detectives wanted to talk to them downtown and uh, they consented to that. Okay. Were they driven downtown or did they drive themselves? They were driven. In squad cars? Correct. And um, were they in the same squad car or separate squad cars? They were in separate. Okay. When they got down here, uh, were they taken to the same room or were they together for any length of time? Yes, when they arrived here, um, when the squads pulled in uh, to the location, uh, they were able to talk. They were right next to each other. They were escorted up, up the elevators to our interview area, uh, which is in an office area of the building. Sure. I'm going to show you it's been marked in this case. This exhibits number 119. Um, is the interview with Chandler, was that audio and video recorded? Yes, it was. And you've seen a copy of that in preparation for trial? Definitely. 119 appeared to be a USB of that video? Yes. I'll move 119 and 118 for the court record uh, into evidence. Any objection? No objection. It is received. Move to publish. You may publish. Um, while I'm getting ready to do that, um, interview rooms, they have cameras in them? Correct. Um, how many cameras usually? Uh, there's typically two cameras. And when Kat and Chandler were brought into these interview rooms, were they kind of, were they walked down together? Were they walked down separately? How did that work? Yeah, so they would have came up the elevator uh, together in the presence of law enforcement. Uh, you would walk out into a hallway. Um, Catherine, Kat would have went down the hallway to the left and around the corner. Chandler remained in that position because the interview room he was going to was right there. Okay. And uh, sometimes there's a delay when people get put in the interview room for a few minutes? Yes. Okay, so if we start eight minutes in, would you be able to represent that nothing notable happened in those first eight minutes other than Mr. Halderson sitting there? Yes. Okay. Uh, and there might be a minute or two more right after that before you walk in? Correct. Okay. Um, and, and we'll do that in one second. There's another detective that joins you in this interview, correct? Correct. Who is that? Uh, detective Bill Hendrickson. Uh, why are there two detectives at this point in the interview? Uh, we always have two detectives in interviews, um, a couple different philosophies there. My focus is the lead detective is 
getting the questionings out to or the questions out to Chandler and um, observing his responses. But I also have to take notes so I can remember everything that's being said. Um, the second detective is also watching the you know the body language of the person, and they can also chime in if there's something that they feel I'm missing, uh, maybe not asking the right question or asking the question in the in the proper way to get the answers that we're looking for. Um, they can chime in and you know maybe clarify things for us. Okay. Um, you know, at this point, I think it would probably um, be best. We'll play this video. Um, I'll move this exhibit as to not obstruct anyone's view. Approximately how long are we going to be watching this video, Detective, just to give everyone a, an idea of how long they're going to be moved? I believe the interview is approximately two hours long. Okay. So perhaps dimming the lights, Judge, would, would, would be appropriate. And, and we may see if... Uh, if we started on the record with the jury at 9.30. Um, I don't know that we can go through the entire interview. We'll, we'll find out. Maybe we'll take a break during it if we, um, at an appropriate point, so that we don't go much past nine, 90 minutes in here and come back and finish up the remainder of the vin video before the, uh, the noon hour. I mentioned we might uh, speed up a little bit, but for instance, I'll just jump to 4.30. Um, or I'll jump to eight minutes and 16 seconds. That's just Mr. Halderson sitting in an interview room? Correct. Okay. Now, a, a couple of questions. Uh, just first, Mr. Halderson is eventually going to move to that chair that's in the bigger part of the screen, right? Yes. And that's when you guys come in? Yes. Okay. We ask him to move to the other chair. Uh, but looking at that top left screen at this point, um, Mr. Halderson's there. It looks like he has a water cup on the table. He does. Okay. Um, he's not handcuffed or chained to the floor or anything like that, right? No, he was down there consensually at that point. Okay. And you mentioned that uh, as they walked in, Cat went to another room. If you're looking at that top left screen um, and you were to walk out that door, would Cat have been to the left or would she have been to the right? She would be to the right of the screen. Okay. Um, so at least in your knowledge, the last time Mr. Halderson saw Kat, that's the way she was walking? Correct. All right. Um, and there might be a minute or two here, um, but we're going to start playing at 8.16 uh, and play through.
Right. Right. Hey Chandler, how are you doing? Not good. Good, good. Why don't you guys switch spots? Yeah. You want to sit in that red chair? Yeah. Want some cup just water? Yeah, one water. Okay. Here's an extra one. Okay. No, here you go. What's going on? All right, um, so we're just gonna talk to you a little bit more, okay? Um, let's write some stuff. Each here. The other one. All right. All right, just so you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna record stuff, okay? It just helps me remember everything and picks up everything that we talk about. Um, so, Brian Shunk, Detective Dane County Sheriff's Office, we spoke yesterday. Yeah, Chandler um, Halderson. Yep. Oh, what's your middle initial, Chandler? M. M is in Michael. Michael. And then your birth date? 3 15 Got it. And then your cell phone, I already have. We've been talking on that. Um, so, obviously, we're, we're here. We want to talk a little bit about uh, your parents going missing, right? Krista and Bart. Um, before we get started, just because you're up here, okay, so I'm just going to read you your constitutional rights, okay, so it's a Dane County issued card that they give us, um, so I'll just read them to you right off the card, okay, uh, you have the right to remain silent, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, you have the right to consult with a lawyer before questioning and to have a lawyer present with you during questioning, if you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you at public expense before or during any questioning, if you so wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop the question and remain silent at any time you wish, and the right to ask for and have a lawyer at any time you wish, including during the questioning. Okay. Do you understand the rights I just read you? I do. Okay. Realizing that you have these rights, are you not willing to answer questions or make a statement? Yes, yeah, yes. so, so the, the second one. Okay. So I'll just read it again. Realizing that you have these rights, are you now willing to answer questions or make a statement? Oh, uh, I will make a statement. Okay. So you understand them. Yeah, you're, you're I, to talk I, to can I have the card so I can read it? I missed some. Um, I'm sorry. I'm I can still read having reading. a little bit of problems. The, the third one. All right, I'll just I'll read it. We'll just start all over. Yeah. yeah we'll just read them all again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to consult with a lawyer before questioning and to have a lawyer present with you during questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you at public expense before or during any questioning, if you so wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop the questioning and remain silent at any time you wish, and the right to ask for and have a lawyer at any time you wish, including during the questioning. Okay. So then the only two questions I asked were, do you understand? Yeah, your I understand, and I am willing to make a statement. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, so, like, like we already said, uh, I talked to you yesterday. Um, so today is July eighth. Uh, it's about five eleven now. We started talking at five oh eight. Um, so yesterday, uh, July seventh, I came to your house um, where you live with your parents, Bart and Krista um, Helderson. And um, the reason I was there is, is you had gone to the Windsor Police Department and reported them missing, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I would then go to the department. I went to their like office break room mm -hmm. area in the same building. Yeah, I think it's mixed in with the city hall. Okay. But nonetheless, a deputy yeah. came and, yes. and spoke to you. Okay. Um, so you, you reported your parents missing. We got some information from you yesterday. Um, we've been following leads last night, um, working today to you know go through different things, um, just trying to locate them, right? Um, so I, I guess if you want to start with, let's just go back to to last Wednesday. Um, Wednesday, I was with my dad. We. What time Wednesday? I remember it. It was kind of a bad day. Okay. Well, why was it a bad day? Um, well, my mom had work, so she was gone. Um, my 
Dad and I were watching something over lunch. It was uh, the Wheel of Fortune, and we have we normally have the couch like with our back facing her. The table we sat at at the end of you coming. Downstairs or upstairs? Downstairs. Okay. In that room with the TV. I tossed the ball and I smashed the glass. Okay. With the dog. The dog's help. Uh, that, yeah, set my dad off and we tried to clean it up. Okay. I don't know about him, but I got injured. Um, but he was mad. He didn't really talk to me too much that day. Uh, my mom got home at five, I believe. I, that's her normal, 5.20 to 5.30. What time does she work, do you know? 7.30 is when she leaves. I don't know her hours, but I know when she leaves okay. at 7.30. And then all the way up till five and she she comes home five twenty, five thirty. Did she come home about five twenty, five thirty that day? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Um, so you guys are or downstairs, um, just to, to touch back on that quick. So the couch so yesterday when we were down in your basement, the couches were in a bed. I he helped me put them in a bed before okay. And Thursday, but they put it into a bed so I could sleep near the bathroom, and the dogs sleep in that floor. So okay, they'll be a lot better if they're sleeping on that floor. Downstairs floor? Yeah, just cooler for them or something. Kind of, yeah. Probably. Okay. All right. So you were tossing a ball. What type of ball was it? Just this gross, hairy tennis ball that oh, okay. Rizzo loves. All right. Just like a green tennis ball, like a normal? Yeah. Normal ball. Okay. The, with the squeaker, not, not oh. like a tennis racket ball. But they don't chew dogs. those. My dog ball. chews those out of the any okay. tennis ball. They just chew the squeakers out, and then they don't play with them anymore. Um, all right, so you're just tossing that around, um, broke the fireplace glass. Uh, you said you were injured. What type of injury did you I have? got a pretty deep hole in my foot. The, uh, last night, Mary looked at it, and she said the reason it keeps bleeding is because there's glass in it. Oh, so, that's the... You showed us your toe. Yeah, I showed the okay. detective lead. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... That one. It could be infected, is what she's thinking, but Neosporin's been helping. Okay, good. Um, keeping it clean and stuff. The best you can. Best. I, I know how, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, once I, oh, Wednesday, back to Wednesday. Yeah. Once I got all the glass out of the dog's hair, um, she didn't sustain any injuries. Good. Uh, nothing even on her nose. She got it with her shoulder bone, I believe. Um, so glass dog, that was roughly around two. And then the rest, he didn't really talk to me. I went back to doing like a job search, kind of just shitting my day away. Just getting games, YouTube maybe. Uh, that's when I came across one of the jobs I liked. Um, then five o'clock rolled up by and we mom came home. Um, dinner. What did you guys have Wednesday night? I couldn't tell you. Okay. Who made it? I think it was probably just stuff from the fridge. Okay. I, don't, I think we all did our own thing again. Sure. By the way, a detective at my house said something's happened. And while we were leaving, people were going inside. Is there a warrant for my house? Should there be? No, I'm just wondering if Luca. Okay. Can uh, we go well, in? As far as I know, they were at your house and they were going to be there talking to you to ask if you would come up here and talk yeah, to us. But um, Officer Haley just like walked pretty much in to the gate, you know, the gate on the outside. Mm -hmm. Just kind of walked in, I was, I was wondering. If was that when you were getting your wallet? Uh, no, we were, we were um, I was in the car waiting to leave. I was just wondering if everything's okay, because she said something's happened. 
Okay. And we need to go down. All right. We'll find out what that's about. Oh, has anything bad happened? Oh, not sure. All right. So, so Wednesday night, mom comes home. Um, dad was angry. Was was he yelling or what was? How, how would you describe dad being angry? It was. If you, he would yell if you said something to him. I guess if you talk to him, if you give him his space, he'll be okay. So Wednesday night. Huh? Wednesday. If you just how, give him his space. How was it that's all we did. Just give him his space. He he won't yell or do anything. Okay. That's all we had to do. Um, we just Ma and I went to clean, the, do some laundry, uh, make our beds, stuff like that. Who is we? Ma and I. Mom. Your, your mom. And, okay. And that was Wednesday night. Yeah, that was, uh, we, we had an early night, no, no TV that night. Gotcha. Um, what time did your parents go to bed Wednesday night, do you think? I was in bed at 8. I, you were? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I couldn't tell you when they went to bed. Okay. No worries. And you were downstairs, that's where you've been sleeping, you told me last uh, night? I was in my room Wednesday. Upstairs, okay. Gotcha, so in the bedroom upstairs, and then you you slept downstairs. Why have you been sleeping downstairs again? You told me last night. The bathroom. Night. The bathroom's right I there. I need to be close, because the stairs, I, I can't see too well in the dark yeah. now, so. Yeah. And just like last night, I'm jotting some notes quick. You know, yeah. it doesn't mean one thing is more important than the other. It just means that I need to remember stuff and uh, sometimes. I understand right now. it. Gotcha. Um, All right, so did you sleep with your door closed that night or open? Oh, yeah, I always have it closed. Closed door, yeah, it makes sense. I'm feeling they argued a little bit after. Parents did? What were they arguing about? Probably what set my dad off that day, the glass. Okay. Um, us not having food ready, and stuff like that. We, I mean, we just microwave whatever was in the fridge, I suppose. Yeah. Who was upset about that? Dad. Your dad was. Okay. Uh, he usually doesn't like that. We, he likes the, when we cook. A okay. Lot. Okay. Does he ever cook? I haven't seen him cook. Oh, he grills. He he likes to grill. He grilled on Thursday. Nice. Right. Uh, I think I told one officer the green egg. He got um, it makes terrible food, but yeah. Dad does. Yeah. Well, the green egg. Oh, so the green fun. egg. It's, That's like a grill or something. Yeah, it's insulated and makes everything smoky. Oh, okay. Um, it's Thursday morning. I wake up. Time you think? Six. Okay. Dogs. <laughs> we talked about that yesterday. Six a.m. is kind of your deal, right? Six a.m. Yeah. That yeah. uh, internal clock now. Yeah. I haven't used to things in a while. Right. Six. I don't often eat breakfast, so I kind of just stay in my room on my phone. Um, help my mom out getting ready. Morning. She she left for work at 7:30. I got her um, whatever she had to do. Uh, what was it? It was meaningless tasks like just daily like pillowcase changes and sheet changes, and stuff like that. You know, in the morning before work. Yeah. Is what we always do. Um, then she's gone. Uh, my dad starts the grill around 8.39 in the morning. The, yeah, to get the temperature right. 
was he working from home that day or yes okay we um we ate the grill nothing really happened between that we kind of either were outside with the dogs from the lighting of the grill him going in taking a couple calls now and then or emails or something mm -hmm. but we just kind of watched the grill and waited to get it set steady at uh, hamburgers for 350 ish okay. then uh, so th yeah we just kind of waited for the burgers um, and then we had we ate noon noon 30. Twelve thirty. Sorry. Sure. Um, then we went inside and had our TV show again. Wheel of Fortune. It was on around our time for lunch. Or was it Family Feud? The Family Feud feud was Thursday. Family Feud. Um, Where did you guys watch that at? Downstairs. The same. Okay. Did you guys have a TV upstairs? I don't remember. No, no. Okay. Not a lot. Um, sorry, I'm really trying to work memory. Um, That's fine. Then, yeah, we went to go do our own things. I went back to a little bit more job searching. This time I branched into DeForest instead of just Windsor. Mm -hmm. Okay. He went back to work. We planned on um, something went well. Oh, we were uh, I don't know, something went well for him. So that's all. Um, then we were hanging out again, and my mom texts, um, I, I, I believe I texted her, everything's going well, uh, his phone died, my dad, he, he didn't believe, he just kind of like charged it, put it on the dock, and left it, um, then we just kind of hung out, and my mom gets home, and I uh, start the, I start a shrimp scampi for my dad, because that's what he wanted, but we didn't have shrimp, so I, I made shrimpless scampi. Um, uh, that's that's where they told me while we were eating it, they, they were gonna go with their friends, and I was like, oh, cool. Um, well, and they I said they were going to the cabin. Yeah. The well, okay. we're going up north. Up That's north how they really refer to it. Who said that? Mom or dad? Ma. My, my dad doesn't talk well. He eats. Okay. Um, so there we are at Thursday dinner. Up north of the cabin, my dad says, I'll need a set for pipe repair and gas. So I'm like, all right. I grabbed the pipe repair stuff from his um, the plumbing chest, their plumbing plumbing box. It's like a, a tote of what you need for pipe repair. Mm -hmm. um, and two whatever jerry cans, uh, I can't remember the amount, but they're red with the safety nozzles. Got those squared away. They had most of their duffels already packed at that point. Mm -hmm. And we all just started bringing them down to the mud room with the shoes yeah. by the garage. Where you showed me him. Um, after that, we watched uh, Is a Netflix original, um, you know, Seven Underground, with a thrill-seeking like it's like they they fake their deaths and they they fly airplanes and um, 
they could like fight that the evil of the world by being ghosts. <laughs> Pretty cool. I don't think I've seen that one yet. Who was watching that? The three of us. All three of you? Okay. All three. And that put it at nine. They had their drinks. Um, went to my computer. My computer was at that, that black table we no, sat at. Right. Sure. We saw the stuff. Um, played, played a video game called Tarkov for, until midnight. Well, after midnight, maybe even. Kind of lose track of time. And my parents by then were asleep. And got their teeth brushed and everything. Um, then I got, I got upstairs. Oh, that was Thursday. Yeah, so I did. So we got the bed all set before they, before we played Tarkov. And that's when I crawled into bed from the, com the black table. So after our movie, we set up my, my couch bed and um, the pillows for the girls. Who helped you set the bed up? My dad. Dad, okay. Yes. He knew he was leaving and I would need that. Um, Friday morning, I woke up. They had left with the stuff it was all set out. I uh, remembered the gas. Um, I found the, the the folding chairs that they wanted to bring, but they never brought them. I'm assuming they could fit them. They're big. So I put those away. Um, yeah, that was Friday morning. I go upstairs, do the dog, or feed the dogs. It was around 6-ish, not 6.15 when I woke up. I was a little late that day. 6.15 Friday, okay. Uh, yes, just when I looked at my phone. Mm -hmm. Dogs saw my Ma's note, the insurance for my appointment. I just ate whatever's on the counter. I think it was cornbread. Where was the note from your mom? That so was on the, the kitchen, like there's a peninsula. Yeah. With the insurance stacked up. But I, I moved it to the table. Okay. And then those insurance cards were there also with that we saw yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think she knew which one I would need. But I have three now. Mm-hmm. Um Friday. Yep. So um, it was Friday I morning. hung out with Cat Friday night, I believe. What'd you do Friday during the day? Oh, oh yeah, let's work backwards. Um, I kind of shit the day away. I played video games. Okay. Parents are gone, why not, right? Yeah, I didn't do anything that I should have. I should have been cleaning and all of that. Seemed pretty clean when I was there. You see all the dog hair that, uh, that's got to be gone. It all comes along with it, right? Yeah. All right, so Friday during the day, just played video games, kind of. Yeah, then after work, I believe that was the day Cat came over. After whose work? Cat, she is oh, five. her work. Five was her work when she, okay. she was off. I believe she came over. Done around five. Okay. The cat came at five. You said? Oh, you said? I don't think she went straight here after. Oh. I, I That's not sure. She came really over. Um, it could have been later, like six, maybe give her time for like oh. getting clothes. Um, this was after work. Did you say? Where yeah. she work at? She works downtown Middleton. Oh, okay. Is a farm tech. Okay. She, um, I believe she stayed with me on that couch that night. So 
what she spent the night over. Yeah. You guys both slept on the couch downstairs? Yeah. Um. What'd you do before you wait, went to bed? It was Friday night. That might have been my own night. I might be wrong. I'm wrong. Okay. I think I spent that night alone. I just kind of gamed online uh, with some of my friends. Oh, I said Saturday night. I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah, no worries, man. So, one night, I gamed alone all night. One night, Kat spent the night on the couch. Oh, and Sunday, she spent the night in my bed with me. She helped me out upstairs. Sunday night. Sunday night. I know that because she didn't want to spend another night on the couch bed. She didn't like it. And she went to work on Monday morning. So that was the my bed night. We, um, backtracking. One night she spent on the couch with me. With, like, the couch bed we've made. Mm -hmm. But one night I gamed all night. Or all day and night, pretty much. And I'm pretty sure that was... Friday night. And let's go with Saturday was my night alone. Okay. So Friday, we, we believe she came over. Yes. And then Saturday was the game night. Yes. So backtracking to Friday, when she came by, we um, asked we just, um, oh, right, no, not right. Um, there's this movie or a TV series on Netflix. We watched pretty much the entirety of that into the morning. It was um, a apocalypse show. Okay. I don't know the name. What time do you guys think you went to bed? I say we stayed up well until 10, I would say. PM? Yeah. Okay. You gotta be at least um, the morning. Saturday, we didn't do much. She left. Um, this is when I'm really starting to notice my legs. Okay. I'm kind of having the anxiety and all of that and like getting a little frustrated with myself and all of that like I it wasn't too bad until like last week Tuesday when I started noticing it and Saturday was like the peak and it's kind of stayed out like this okay peak anxiety and and this kind of like set me like fast for some space and I just kind of gained Saturday. Um, couldn't tell you when I went to bed. I, I think I might have even stayed up till two. That, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just the same game. Escape from Tarkov. Um, I, I couldn't get a hold of any of my friends to play with, unfortunately. I, I played like some here and there mm -hmm. from Discord, but none would like, stick around for that late in the night. Sure. Then we get to Sunday. It's the fourth. Judge, <clears throat> I'll give the court reporter a moment. Okay. Uh, I'm pausing the video at uh, what's on the screen as 1737.33, uh, what's actually time played as 41.58. It is 10.30, the traditional time for the morning break. We'll go ahead and do that, ladies and gentlemen. And we'll, when we come back, we'll finish up the video. I think it'll take us to the noon hour, but I don't want to go more than that time with you. So even though you've only been in this room about an hour, we'll take a 10-minute break so everybody can have a chance to stretch. All right, for the jury.